So this video is called Welfare Check because someone just did one on me. They were worried that, a good friend of the show, they meant well, um, but they hadn't seen any content from me and they were really worried for me. And I explained to them, it's totally normal. I always have a break, just like I did in May after the federal election. Um, and then it, it dawned on me. I was like, I've actually got to catch up all you guys on what's going on, how'd the Victorian election go, what's in store for us in 2023. So here we go. The Victorian election. A month ago, I sat in this exact same spot and answered the question, can Dan Andrews win? And I said, it depends what you mean by win. And I said it exactly like that. There are three ways that you could win. The first one was for the Liberal Party and the National Party as a coalition, forming the majority of seats in the lower house and picking who the premier is, P probably Matthew Guy. Now, unfortunately, that they didn't come through because the Liberal Party under Matthew Guy's leadership had no clear messaging. They were, they were not conservative. They completely abandoned their base. But the National Party did very well because they know who they are. And so they didn't get the majority of seats between them, and that means they don't get to pick the Premier. The Labour Party did. The second way they could have won was the seat of Mulgrave, cutting the head of the snake off because it's Dan Andrews' seat. Now, unfortunately, despite the best efforts of Family First, Aidan McClendon from the Freedom Party, uh, Ian Cook um, running as an independent, and also Michael Pierce Strino for the Liberal Party, between them they couldn't come up with the votes to beat Dan Andrews, even off the primary vote. Now, when it comes to Dan Andrews, if you remember, he ended up getting a lot of donkey votes because he was mysteriously put at the top of the list. It looks like that's tipped him over the edge. I was listening to uh, Ian Cook's campaign manager, Emily, from Voice of Victoria, and a lot of her scrutineers were saying that they saw in some polling places up to 30% of the votes in the polling booths for Dan Andrews being donkey votes. So it could be, you know, 5% of all Dan Andrews votes are donkey votes. And that's what got him across the line. This is just the latest reminder of why it's important to vote properly. Less dicks on ballots means less dicks in parliament, as Emily said. And finally, the third way to win was to actually capture the balance of power in the upper house between the freedom parties. That also didn't happen. It looks like the legalized cannabis party is going to capture two to three spots, securing the supply that Labor needs in order to get things passed through the upper house. That's really unfortunate. Uh, the freedom party's did well, they got three spots, maybe they could have gotten more, but unfortunately the Liberal Party, once again, they've let us down. They did not do a good job, they did not do good on messaging, they did not represent their conservative base and a lot of people abandoned them. It's also worth mentioning that the Freedom Parties, we didn't need nine of them. I mean, seriously. In the federal election we had ten, in Victoria we had nine. I'm so glad in New South Wales we don't have that many. We've probably got about two to three serious ones. How did Turning Point go? How did our resources go? Well, we set out to deliver four projects and we delivered six. We spoiled people with information which gave them transparency with the political process, whether it was the Glen Jury stuff or the party's policies or whatever. There were six projects. It was like, it was crazy. And we saw an increase to the How to Vote card downloads from the federal election. In the federal election, we got 43,000. In Victoria's election, we got 63,000. So we increased it by basically 50%. And we're stoked. That's awesome. And that's a credit to you guys for sharing the resources out there with everyone you know. And so we're proud that there was literally nothing else we could have done. Like, we left it all in the field. Now, where do we go from here? Because a lot of people are a little bit lost. Um, about six weeks out from the election, I warned what was going to happen. I also warned what was going to happen 100 days out from the election. I can't help but feel that it's falling on deaf ears not with you guys. You get it. You're awesome. You know, you share the resources. It's falling on deaf ears from the major parties like the Liberals. It's falling on deaf ears from people with serious money on the conservative side. So if they will not listen, you need to make them listen. How do you do that? If you're not in a political party already, you really ought to join one. If you're going to stay in Victoria after this election result, first off, you have my respect. But second off, you need to join a political party. I don't care which one, join one, start making change, start getting people in your family, people in your community to join it. If you're, in a, if you're looking at the nine freedom parties, I strongly recommend personally joining one of the ones that actually got someone elected in the upper house. The honorable mentions to Family First and the Freedom Party who got a very high vote in the lower house, but unfortunately they didn't get anyone up. They're also good parties to join as well if you really want. But it does look like the Lib Dems, uh, the Democratic Labour Party, but also the uh, Pauline Hanson's One Nation 
manage to get people up. So look, consider those parties. But also, if you really don't want to join a freedom party, join whichever other party which, you know, appeals to you. Join the Liberal Party. Reform the Liberal Party. There's a lot of great people there. Join the Labor Party. Make it back into what it used to be. Join the Greens. Make it a truly Greens party and actually make it maybe a nuclear party because nuclear doesn't put out emissions. Do you, get the, do you get my drift? The reason why things have gotten so bad, as I've said many times, and as Jordan Peterson said on his recent tour, where responsibility has been abdicated, opportunity lurks. And if you don't seize that opportunity, the worst kinds of people are going to seize it and they're going to weaponize that opportunity against you. So if you're going to stay in Victoria, the pathway is clear. Why join a political party? It allows you to have a say over what policies the party runs on, what candidates get voted up, and it allows you to veer that party wherever you want it to go. And if you're not in the room, other people are going to make that decision for you where it goes. So what's in store for us in 2023? Well, we've got a New South Wales election in March. In many ways, the stakes couldn't be higher. Um, yeah, I won't tell you why. I'll tell you next year. I won't tell you now because if I tell you now, you'll forget, probably. <laughs> and uh, if you say something before Christmas, people forget. I'll tell you next year in mid, mid-January, mid probably. But we've also got the voice of the parliament debate, which is an absolute corporate Aboriginal voice of the parliament, a completely racist proposition, an anti Australian proposition, an anti-parliamentarian proposition, and it's going to have to be opposed. There's a lot of Aboriginal people in the freedom community, for example, you know, but this is not, this is not for you guys. This is, they say it's a voice of the parliament for Aboriginals. This is not, it is anything but that. It is a way to subvert the constitution. And that is not my opinion. That is the opinion of men far and more intelligent than myself like Augusto Zimmerman, and I've got a video coming out about that. By the way, Augusto's over in Brazil fighting for their elections right now. Legend, absolutely legend guy. But no, the fight goes on. I mean, nothing's changed. Um, yeah, sure, I have a break after the election. But, um, yeah, like, I, I killed myself for your election in Victoria. Despite knowing what the outcome was going to be, we left it all on the field. And that's something to be proud of. That's awesome. I mean, that is true courage when you know that you know, something's going to go a certain way, but you work your fingers to the bone in order to get, you know, the best possible opportunity. No regrets. I've got no regrets. You know, I literally know there's nothing more I personally could have done. Nothing. Despite the spending caps, because you guys, you could, just so you know, turning point, we couldn't spend more than like $4,000. That's why people like Clive Palmer couldn't just come in with his billions, millions rather, and actually spend on the campaign down there. And the same with Simon Holmes at court with the Teals, the Teals didn't get up. So any work that had to be done down there, I had to personally do myself and, you know, and any work that wasn't me that did it, we had to keep it within a, a very limited budget. So we did very well considering the, um, the circumstances and considering the preference whisperer, Glenn Drury. He really is a genius, but it's unfortunate that he's using his genius to enrich himself. It's funny, you know, if the Liberal Party didn't want to abolish the group voting ticket and they wanted to keep it, Glenn would switch sides. He would switch sides and he would help them get elected and he could probably do it with the upper house. But the man is just, he just goes for the, high, the highest bidder. He's a mercenary. You know, whoever's willing to pay Glenn Jury the highest amount, he will work for. And uh, put that aside, and I completely oppose what he does. I think it's completely immoral. But as a young up-and-coming person in uh, elections and, uh, you know, kicking goals at the young age that I am, there's a lot I can learn from Glenn. Not his evil tactics, not his immoral tactics, but there's a lot I can learn from him. I mean, the revelations that came out during the elections, because of those military guys like Chris Burson from the Angry Victorians Party and Heston Russell, the leader of the party, like, 
Glenn Drury had people leaking information to him within Clive Palmer's circle, like inner circle, within even Aidan McClendon's Freedom Party. I mean, that blew me away. I mean, that like... And don't even get me started on the different ways that our projects almost got subverted by people trying to infiltrate, but we still delivered them. <sighs> Politics is a dirty business, isn't it? But this is why we do it. This is why we do it. It's because the worst kinds of people are... They've been running this country into the ground for decades, and we're just finding our feet now. And we've done extraordinarily well. I mean, two, two, two elections... One in March. Let's see how we go. I think March is going to be much better. I mean, I've, I've, I've said it throughout the Victorian election. I'm more looking forward to the New South Wales election. We know we've got the balance of power. We know we're going to do very well. We've got good parties there. We've got leadership there. We've got elected members there. We, uh, the home of Turning Point is New South Wales. Um, despite the fact we had a team for Victoria's election in Victoria, the home of our audience is New South Wales. That's where like 50% of our audience is. And so, yeah, it's go time. It's going to be good. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And as I alluded to before, the stakes couldn't be higher for New South Wales and the country. There are repercussions for the entire country, which I will tell you about next year. But until then, the best advice I can give you guys is have a nice break. I hope you enjoy your Christmas and uh, New Year's celebrations. If you're like me and things are a bit tight right now because of, you know, you might have lost your job as well, you know, over the last two and a half years. I feel sorry for you, especially if you have kids and a, and a partner and um, you can't get as many presents for your kids under the tree like you used to, or you can't, you know, go on that holiday for as long as you wanted to or any holiday at all. You've got to work the whole time. You know, I am sorry. I'm sorry that you've gone through all of this. And all I can say is that next year t times will be tougher and we've got to tighten our belt. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm here with you guys. I'm going to be um, giving you more information into the new year. We are ramping up plans next year with more tours, bigger guests from America. Announcement coming out on that soon. We're infiltrating the universities and establishing chapters at the universities to tackle those factories of bad ideas. And we're moving forward with even greater election plans. And we've got the voice to the parliament debate as well, which we've got to smash. Now's the time to step up, not step back. It's not a time to give up. It's a time to fight harder than ever for our kids, grandkids, nephews, nieces, because this country's going to crap and we're only just seeing it. Anyway, some of you guys have been on this for a very long time and I commend you. But we can't give up this country. It's a beautiful country. It's an energy-rich country. It's a beautiful country. Excellent people. And for the sake of your kids, I mean, for the sake of me, I'm 25, for God's sake. I don't want, I don't want, to, I don't want to be paying the national debt off my entire life. We've got, to, we've got to fix this. Anyway, you guys have a great time. Promise me you will have a break over the summer. And um, I hope that you all um, take the time to spend time with your family um, and remember why we do what we do. But other than that, I'll see you guys later. Give this a share, get the word out there and um, I will see you guys later.